Member for West Vancouver, Capilano. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise in the House to speak on an issue of growing concern in British Columbia and one I'm sure that all of those in the House can agree upon. As a Canadian and as a British Columbian, I'm always been very proud of uh, having a medical system that me, my families, and my community could have timely access to life-saving medical um, treatments. But that system has fallen apart. Emergency rooms in rural communities have been forced to close. Wait times for emergency and specialized care continue to climb, and a lack of paramedics has severe and sometimes fatal consequences. And especially in my community, residents are continuing to struggle just to even get on a wait list and maybe to see a doctor. And we all know that if you don't have a doctor, you can't have referrals, prescriptions, diagnostics. A doctor, a family doctor, is your entry level into the medical system and life-saving medical treatment. Our health care system is failing British Columbians. Hospital closures, doctor shortages, concerningly high wait lists at walk-in clinics are becoming the norm across the province. Our, com our communities are suffering and people are feeling like there's just simply not enough is being done to address all of these issues. North Vancouver, my community, is at the centre of the health care crisis. According to the 2022 MediMap Walk-in Clinic Wait Time Index, North Vancouver has the longest wait times in all of Canada, not simply British Columbia, but all of Canada, with an average of 160 minutes per visit. The longest wait times in the entire country are in fact occurring in our province. Four of ten cities with the longest wait times are here in British Columbia. The average wait time in BC walk-in clinics has increased significantly in the past few years, going from 58 minutes in 2019 to 79 minutes in 2022. Now, it's important to note that other provinces have these challenges, but British Columbia is um, more than triple the average time in Ontario. That is significant, and that is a BC-grown issue. These growing wait times are evidence that our health care system is struggling to provide basic access to care to residents across the province. And while it's devastating to see this happening in my own community, I was unfortunately not surprised by these statistics I consistently hear from residents who are concerned about their access to primary care and lack of a family doctor. The number of calls that my office receives has not been slowing down, Mr. Speaker. Access to health care in BC is not improving. This is not only a problem in my constituency of West Vancouver Capilano, but I also hear from other residents across all of the North Shore in my nearby constituencies who are desperate for access to all forms of health care and are not receiving the health they need. As of July 2022, there are officially 287 general physicians working on the North Shore, and that includes those who are working at Lionsgate Hospital, the UPCC, and those who work in specialized services or on a part-time basis. However, the North Shore is currently seeing a growing number of family doctors retiring with no new doctors there to take their place, and this has left thousands stranded with no access to primary care provider. At present, uh, over one million people, or one in five British Columbians, as we know, do not have a family doctor, and many of those are in my constituency. We know that there are at least 7,600 patients on the North Shore who are on a centralized wait list for a family doctor. Now, this list continues to grow every month, and it only includes those that are actually registered on a wait list. The actual number of those who are without a family doctor is significantly larger. As 20% of respondents to a North Shore News poll said they do not have a family doctor. So without a family doctor, people are forced to go to walk-in clinics for anything from referrals to diagnostic testing. And this is adding to the strain on our walk-in clinics, which can't handle the increased capacity of patients. At our clinics on the North Shore, you can no longer simply walk in for care, as they have now turned into two-hour wait outside clinics or require appointments to be booked in advanced clinics. 
In many cases, people must call the walk-in clinic as soon as it opens at 7 a.m. to book an appointment for that day, and in worst cases, residents will arrive to book an appointment in the morning only to find the clinic already fully booked for the day. There are often people who are neglecting their own health care because they simply cannot afford a seven-hour wait in order to seek uh, urgent care. Mr. Speaker, many patients, um, single parents, don't have the option to leave their kids alone for seven hours while they get the care they need. And there have been a number of cases where elderly pa uh, patients simply cannot walk in and sit down in a clinic. So their families choose to call an ambulance to take them to the hospital emergency room instead. They're even being told by 811 nurses to call an ambulance rather than try and go to a walk-in clinic on the North Shore. Mr. Speaker, these issues are not exclusive to the North Shore. Across the province, we see communities, both rural and urban, struggling to get basic access to primary health care. Our health care system is broken and has continued to get worse over the past six years. The increased wait times and lack of family doctors are a huge concern for any community, particularly an aging community like we have on the North Shore. And when a family doctor retires, there's no guarantee that their patients will be able to find a new family doctor. And the doctors are extending their, their careers and not retiring for fear of their patients being stranded. It should be a priority of this government to start delivering on their commitments to improve access to health care on the North Shore and across British Columbia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.